Hi, everybody. Happy afternoon. I hope everybody had a wonderful Thanksgiving, um, spent time with friends and family, and got a well-deserved break. Um, I know that you all needed it and well-deserved it, so I hope it was great all around for everybody. Um, so I have a few updates for you today, um, a few slides to go through. Um, as usual, we'll keep questions till the end, and Paul will keep track of those for us. So here we go. So we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk about alternative serving locations. We're going to talk about electronic applications. Um, we're going to do a, an annual cook-off, in-person training, PEBT, ED534, remote meals, USDA foods, SCA funds, and verification. All fun stuff that I know that you all want to talk about. So first on the agenda, um, as we've been coming out to schools and the reviewers have been out in districts again, um, we've come across um, situations with alternative service locations. Um, so these are locations that may be outside of your cafeteria where your staff is not serving the food. Um, we wanted to remind you, you're still responsible for the meal and for the point of service that the student is being served. So student can be served by yourself, one of your staff people. Um, the student can come at a time when there isn't a large group in the cafeteria. If you want to train an ed tech or a special services person to sign off, um, that the child receive the meal, you can do it that way. And this would pertain to other buildings that you're not necessarily in or for programs for any meal that you are claiming reimbursement for. Also a reminder, there is an alternate point of service form that should be filled out and kept on site for your records. Um, and starting next year in 24, we're going to ask you to upload those forms into CMP Web, and they'll be part of your application process. Um, those forms can be found on our website under NSLP Daily Operations Forms. So any meal that you're claiming reimbursement for, you are responsible for and should have some sort of process to make sure that those meals are going to those students um, and be can be qualified. Electronic online applications, we wanted to make sure we have learned from another state that not all online platforms are able to print out the applications for review for the state agency. Um, so this is a requirement for the program, and as the SFA, you should be able to print out the information on hard copy if one of us is coming to look at the applications as we are doing for the Special Provision 2 programs this year. Um, we haven't come into cross into any issues within the state of Maine, um, but I wanted you to be aware um, and be able to pull up that information if you need to and need a hard copy of that information, um, you should be able to do that. So just a reminder there. And our all exciting farm to school cook-off is coming in the spring. We're really excited to bring teams back. Um, we're really looking to do at least three regional locations this year. Um, and our local Challenge ingredients are going to be local oats and carrots. So if you have a team that you want to get going and start thinking and putting on those um, those chef hats, um, think about what you can do for those local ingredients. Um, we are, as I said, looking for at least three locations. Our first confirmed location is Humane Arno in their kitchen. So we're ex really excited to get that up and going. Um, get some teams over there. It'll be an exciting space to be able to work in. Um, so contact information is here on the slide, and I think you guys all know 
who to get in contact with for, for the Farm to School cook-off. We're looking for a registration by January 13th. So let's think about it this month and see what we can pull together. I look forward to seeing you guys all competing. And as we talk about kitchens, I wanted to remind you of our culinary classroom, Walter's Kitchen here in Augusta. Um, we've been starting to have in-person trainings back. Um, and this can offer your staff the skills, um, some refresher skills if they need a refresher or some basic skills. Uh, Robin's been doing a few with uh, local recipes. She did two with fish. Um, these are kid-friendly recipes. It's free of charge for you and your staff. We've had some outside local chefs come in. We have done some of the inside stuff with Michelle here. Um, it's all cooking from scratch. We've highlighted some local harvest of the month. Um, really think about these opportunities that you have. Um, and we encourage you guys to come up to Augusta um, and come and use this kitchen. It's a great asset um, for you guys to be able to train your staff. Um, and if you have any suggestions, um, please reach out. More than welcome to take any suggestions um, for trainings so that we can get some people here in person um, and get some use out of this kitchen. So we're really excited. We'd love to see you up here. Um, come check it out um, and look for those trainings for the, in the spring. Okay, PEBT. Our local level pandemic EBT administrative funds are coming um, and you should be seeing them Shortly, they've already been dispersed. These funds are to cover the administrative costs of managing PEBT at the local level. Allowable costs include staff time spent answering questions and troubleshooting and providing data. Each school is receiving $628 per school. So be sure to look for those. Um, the HHS is sending out the benefits for school year 22 and summer 22 benefits. This was based on last year's data. It has come to our attention that there is a few schools that have been missed. So please call DHHS if you feel that they, if you have a school that has not received this benefit. Um, I think there was nine in the state. So be sure to let them know. Um, and if you've been receiving a lot of questions about benefits that haven't been received, it, it may actually be that um, they didn't receive them. The phone number is here um, to reach out to DHHS. Um, and if you need further assistance, you can give us a call here at the office. The October survey, or what we call the ED-534, we've had a lot of conversation about this um, report this year, um, and we have decided that we're going to make changes to the data collection for the ED-534. Right now, all the information is in and we've collected it all, but we are now going to collect individual ISP data with the multiplier versus groupings for the CEP schools. So if you're a CEP school, we're gonna report the individual school data versus the overall grouping. Um, this is to better reflect the actual information um, at the school level. Um, but this does not change or affect your claiming percentage rate for your claims. I just wanna make sure that everybody's clear that this Information is just for your 534. It will not change anything about your claiming in CMP web. Um, this may, we are going to change the name of it next year. Um, so you'll see that coming. It's no longer the percentage. You will be able with this change. You will be able to use the individual school data for um, 
after school snacks, breakfast after the bell, CACFP, and any grant reporting um, that may be need to be done at a school level. Or you can choose to use the grouping percentage for any of those programs if you wish. For next year, the Special Revision 2 schools will be doing their reporting based on the percentages from this year. Just your enrollment will change. Um, I'll take any questions about this at the end. Um, this report will be posted by the end of the week um, under our financial tab on the website. Again, that's the 534. So we've got a lot of questions about remote days, and I think the questions probably came more to the front office here um, than in our office. So they have sent this clarification to superintendents today, and I wanted to bring it to your attention. The school administrative units that provide meals to students and adhere to the requirement for the instructional day may count a remote day towards the 175 instructional days. For school units that have entered into the agreement with the USDA to participate in the National School Lunch Program are responsible to provide meals to students during each instructional day. The federal requirement requires that we provide meals be served in a congregate setting and consumed on site. If an SAU cannot meet those requirements, such as during a remote or abbreviated day, the meal cannot be reimbursed under the NSLP and all associated meal costs become the responsibility of the SAU. But districts need to provide meals for those students in order for it to be counted as an instructional day. As I said, this information hat did go out to superintendents today, um, and hopefully it will clarify anything um, that's going on out there. The USDA pre-survey is open and will remain open until 4 p.m. on Friday the 16th. Um, this is a pre-survey so that we have some understanding of what items that you would like to receive as part of your commodities for the upcoming school year. Um, if you are responsible for two sponsors, you will be deciding for both of them when placing your pre-survey. We are looking for which products are of interest and any information that we receive from the pre-survey will be reviewed and products of adequate interest will be included in your annual survey. The link will be available in your Thursday update. Um, please make sure that you take advantage of this time to be able to go through and see what items that you would like to see. Again, this is for the upcoming school year. so. FY24, scary, yeah. Um, so the season begins. We'd love to get your feedback on what is available. SCA reporting um, for SCA funds. Well, we have another round of reporting. Um, please make sure that you follow the MS Forms link found in the Thursday update, or you can find it on the website on the nutrition, which is on the homepage of our website. We're looking to find out how much you have for funds currently and how much has been used. And verification information um, was due into this office on November 20th. Um, and we have 27 districts that have not entered any data into CMP web for verification. We have 34 data districts that have not completed the verification results in CMP web. And we have 128 districts that have not completed the additional verification information 
requested in the Thursday update. The link to the form is in the Thursday update. If you will please go into the Thursday update and give us the additional information that we need that was not included into CMP web. Um, that, and that, thank you all for all that you do each day. Um, and Paula, do we have any questions today? We do. What can we do for you? We both have to do with remote days. Remote days, okay. So does that mean that districts have to pay for remote meals? They have to, have to cover your costs. Does that include staff labor? Yes. That's part of their costs, your costs. That was the only two questions. We're gonna wait for a couple of minutes and see if anybody has anything else. How can we get the Thursday update? <gasps> Miss Paula. How do they get the Thursday update? By subscribing to the listserv, James. By subscribing to the listserv. And you'll get the Thursday update. We are really trying to use that tool to get that information to you guys um, and try and eliminate a lot of the listserv stuff coming from us. And is, we're also archiving it on the website, so you can go back and look at old ones if you need to go back and look for information that we might have sent out prior. So make sure you subscribe to the listserv um, and get that information on the Thursday update. The link to the Thursday updates on our website is right on our homepage. Right on the homepage for you. I did want to mention also that there was a delay in your October claim payments. Um, there was a glitch here. It's part of those growing pains that not only we're having, but also finance is having too with um, all of these additional meals that we're serving, which is great. Um, so that glitch has been cleared up and the checks were cut today. Um, they should come tomorrow. So if you guys want to start looking tomorrow, probably around the end of the week, um, you should see those payments coming. Um, so if you had a delay in payment, um, you should see those payments coming around the end of the week. Um, so I just want to let some of you know that. And we have another question, Paul. We do. How do you suggest unaccounted meals at alternative serving locations be handled? Unaccounted meals. At alternative serving locations. Ideally, it would be to have one of your staff at that alternative serving location. Um, if not, it's to train somebody who can count those and be responsible for those additional meals. Um, I guess it was for the cost of the meal. They added to their question. I think you may want to call us at the office for um, some more specific information so that we can better answer your question. So the person that's asking those questions, um, please give us a call at the office and we'll forward your call to one of the reviewers so we can give you some specific information. I did want to mention soy milk as well. Um, for schools that are offering soy milk, you need to make sure that you have a parent's request um, or a doctor's note in order to be offering soy milk. Um, it shouldn't be just out for everybody. Um, and you need to make sure that that milk is meeting the requirements of the National School Lunch Program and is uh, an equivalent to a dairy product. 
So I wanted to make sure that we highlighted that as well um, as kids are back in school. Are we looking at anything else, Paula? No more. Um, yes. One more. Oh, we do have a sample parent request form on our website for that. Yes, we do. That was not a question, that was a statement. Thank you, Sarah. That form is on the website. All right, if anybody, nobody has else, if has any questions, we'll leave for the day. Thank you all very much. Enjoy December. I hope that um, the snow stays away and we're able to um, manage through another few weeks. Um, have a great day. Enjoy the sunshine. And thank you again all for what you do.